Hello and welcome to 1991 Ferrari Testarossa and in today's video I'm going to be telling you why you should consider picking up one in Gran Turismo 7. The Ferrari Testarossa. You can pick this vehicle up from the used car dealership for 373,200 credits which for a Ferrari of its time or the other Ferraris that came out in the same time period for example the Ferrari F40 as well as the Ferrari GTO, well, the Testarossa is the more affordable option with it coming in at under 500,000 credits. It's practically a bargain. So what do you get for spending so much money? Well, you're gonna get a 4.9 litre flat 12 engine that produces 384 brake horsepower with a 5 speed transmission, the car is mid engine rear wheel drive comes in at a weight of 3,302 pounds which is just over 1,500 kgs and is capable of hitting a top speed of 184 miles per hour and all of this only comes in at 526.33 performance points but what does all of this actually mean when you get behind the wheel of it in Gran Turismo 7? Well, if we take a round K auto driving park, you know my go to test track well, we're gonna see that by the end of the straightaway that we're gonna be doing under 220 km per hour. Then if we slam on the brakes, well, you're gonna be greeted with a lot of understeer. Yes, the Ferrari Testarossa is fun, however, you can feel the vehicle's age. So when it comes to cornering, you can take corners practically flat out. However, there is a lot of body roll. The suspension is a bit on the softer side of life. And... You can't really push it as hard as you want to because the vehicle just doesn't feel like it wants to do that. And I really noticed that when coming in at a high speed into a corner and slamming on the brakes and the car just pushes out. So I honestly thought I was going to be expecting a lot of oversteer but I got the exact opposite and was experiencing a lot of understeer. But as you get used to the vehicle, as you start experiencing and learning how the Ferrari Testarossa actually handles, well, you are going to actually start having quite a blast. Now, around the circuit, lap times you are going to find yourself sitting around a 1 minute 55 second mark, which look, it's not the fastest thing out there, but for cars of the similar time frame, this actually isn't that bad. It's not the worst I've ever seen. Usually with cars that you'll find around the 80s, that they are going to be sitting lap times around the 2 minute mark around the circuit. So a 1 minute 54 being the fastest time I was able to sit isn't too shabby at all. Now, as I said, the brakes need a bit of improving. The acceleration can see a bit of a change, as I said. When it comes to top speed, you know we aren't really doing the fastest thing out there and the acceleration just can be improved to just help us gain speed a lot faster because we can feel that okay we are gaining but there can be a very big improvement and so the suspension also needs a bit of adjusting. So let's do all that I just said. So if we head on over to the tuning shop now, well then we're gonna see that we're able to add quite a few bit of upgrades to the Ferrari and see that we now increase the power to 726 brake horsepower and the vehicle now weighs 1114 kg so vehicle is a lot lighter and produces a lot more power so now when it comes to the customization of the Ferrari Testarossa well you don't really have that much customization if we're gonna be completely honest you have one option for a rear wing and that is just your custom rear wing that's about it you have no wide body options nothing so when it comes to customization you are really limited and you can only really spice up the look by adding a livery now if we head back on over to the circuit with the vehicle being fully upgraded, it feels like a modern Ferrari now. We see that yes, the vehicle is still naturally aspirated. We didn't have the ability to add a turbocharger or supercharger to the vehicle, but we see that the acceleration of the vehicle has improved tenfold. 
Now down here also driving power straight away we see that we are doing almost 280 kilometers per hour going into the first corner and when we slam on the brakes we see that we have no understeer and occasionally when exiting corners the rear end steps out so this is exactly what you should expect when getting behind the wheel of a Ferrari and with the Tessarossa it's honestly the best of both worlds because you get the iconic Ferrari styling you get the iconic power that you expect from a modern Ferrari and you get a bit of history. The Ferrari Testarossa was introduced as the company's mid-engine flagship vehicle in 1984. Now when it comes to the designing process of the car, well they handed that on over to Pininfarina and they did not hold back with making an absolutely stunning vehicle. Now the looks were not only for visual purposes but they were also there for functionality. We see that the side straights were made and put in that certain position to direct air into the F1 style radiators necessary to keep the vehicle's performance at optimal level. That was necessary to keep the 5 liter V12, sorry, 180 degree V12 running at optimal conditions. And this is why the vehicle is able to run 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.8 seconds. Which, with us now upgrading the vehicle, is uh, we see that time drop drastically. Now the vehicle had, now the vehicle had in its standard form had looks, it had a performance, and that's also one of the reasons it was the star in Miami Vice from season three up to season five. So. That's just a little bit of history and another reason why you should consider picking up the Ferrari Testarossa because look, the Ferrari it comes with history, it comes with incredible looks, it comes with amazing performance. The only real downside when it comes to using for money grinding, yeah it's not really the best thing out there. I would recommend using the vehicle in like 600 performance points builds or 700 performance point builds. But if you are aiming for 800, you are not going to reach it because with the vehicle being on racing soft tyres, max out downforce, full power, it comes in at 738.45 and that is going to get absolutely smoked by vehicles around the 800 performance points mark. So, keep around the 700 performance points mark max and you should be good to go and have a lot of fun. So. The Ferrari Testarossa, it's not going to be the best thing out here for money grinding but it is still a fantastic vehicle and you can see why it was a flagship in Ferrari's history. So with all this being said, hope you guys did want to enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more Grand Turismo 7 content and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!